we're going to be doing rear brakes, rotors and pads on this 2013 Hyundai Elantra. With a 21 millimeter socket, we're going to remove the rear tire. We're going to remove our caliper from the bracket so we can get to the pads and the rotor. I'm going to do that with these two guide pins here, 14 millimeter bolts. We'll remove those now. If you can get on this with a socket, go ahead. If not, you grab a wrench. We're gonna use a pry bar in here and just try and work our caliper out. All right, once you have your caliper free of the pads, you're gonna hang this out of the way without putting any stress on this line. To do that, we're gonna use a caliper hanger Now that we have our caliper free, we can go ahead and remove our brake pads on our rotor here. We're just gonna use that same pry bar, put it up against the metal backing and just give it a couple of taps. And we can rotate that out. These pads have been worn down very thin. There isn't a lot of space in here to get in and twist. You can hammer this in if you want. If you are replacing the rotors and the pads, you can go ahead and do that. Another way is to take your pry tool or flathead screwdriver come in from the top front and just push outward. And rotate that out. And you can see these are definitely in need of replacing. Now we can remove our caliper bracket. It's held on by two bolts. These are 14 millimeter bolts. So with a 14 millimeter socket and a breaker bar, we'll remove those now. All right, with the Phillips screwdriver, I'm gonna remove these two screws. There's one here, and there should be one here, but our vehicle has one that's been broken off. We're gonna start with the one we can get to. What you'll also need to do, since the wheel is spinning, is you'll need to lock down the wheel somehow. We're gonna use a pry bar and wedge it in so that our wheel doesn't rotate. All right, so we were gonna take out our second Phillips head screw, but before we received the vehicle, somebody broke it off, or it broke off. So what we did is took a sledge, and just hit our rotor a couple of times to break it off, and it broke free, and we can slide it right out. All right, so our second screw here has broken off. We're gonna just grind that flat. All right, so before we put our new rotor on, we're gonna make sure that this surface here where the rotor seats up against is nice and clean. We're gonna do that, just an abrasive wheel on an air tool. You can use a wire wheel, whatever you need to do to get this super clean and flat. If you are using 
a pneumatic grinder of some sort, and you're gonna kick up rust, just wear some kind of respiratory and eye protection. All right, what I like to do now, you get some dust and some residue on here. You can hit it with uh, compressed air. I'm just gonna hit it with a little brake clean. Let that stuff drip down the bottom. Make sure you have some kind of drip collection down a rag or a bucket. All right, so we're gonna mount our rotor on backwards. I'm gonna secure it in place with either one or two lug nuts. I'm gonna go with one, finger tight. What we're gonna do is clean this surface with brake clean. Get all the shipping greases and oils off of it. Again, you wanna have some kind of drip pan or absorbent mat down. I'm just gonna spray this with brake clean. Just give it a wipe. And then we'll flip it over and do the other side. We'll do the same thing here. We'll secure it with one lug nut. And brake clean. Now we'll go ahead and take this rotor off. being sure to keep the outside surface clean. We're gonna spray some anti-seize on this surface that the rotor will mount to. And then we'll go ahead, line up our two screw holes, slide our rotor into place. All right, so now that we have our rotor in place, secured in by one lug nut, we'll go ahead and put our Phillips screw in. Now that that screw's in, you can take this lug nut off. That screw's holding on the rotor. This is when you would put your second Phillips screw in to attach the rotor to the hub. Our vehicle came with that screw broken. We do not have another one to put in. But if you do have it and it's not broken, go ahead and install it now. So now when we put on new pads, our new pads are gonna be thicker than what was on there originally. So we have to compress our piston. This piston you see has notches in it. So you can't just compress this piston. It has to rotate to compress in to give us more room in here for our new pads. This is where this tool comes in. Line up the side that matches for your piston. For us, it's here. and twist it in. If you don't have this tool, you can use a pair of long needle nose pliers and rotate your piston as well. So now we're gonna reinstall our caliper bracket, but before we do that, our brake pads came with new hardware. So we're gonna install our new hardware now. Typically you can pop these out. Sometimes they've been in there a while, they won't come out. Use a flathead screwdriver, a pry tool. Ours will just pop out. And before you put your new hardware in here, we'll go ahead and clean around where our hardware sits and just remove any loose rust or corrosion. We're just gonna use a wire brush, clean up where our hardware goes. All right, so now with our caliper bracket cleaned where our hardware is gonna go, we can install our new hardware. Sit it in place, press it down. One thing to keep an eye on is this back corner here. 
You want to make sure that's in as far as you can get it. All right, and before we install this into the vehicle, we're going to put some brake grease where our new brake pads will sit, which will be right in this groove here. Now we can reinstall our caliper bracket. So slide that over the rotor and reinstall our two bolts. All right, so now with a 14 millimeter socket, we'll tighten these down. We're just gonna snug them up So now we'll torque these caliper bolts down, be 50 foot pounds. Install our pads. I'm going to start with the back, slide this bottom tab into the channel in our new hardware, and just rotate the front into place. Do the same on the front, put that bottom tab in, line up the front and push into place. Take our caliper off our hanger. Now with our piston compressed, we can slide our caliper onto our new pads and in place, we will replace caliper bolts. Now we can torque these down to 50 foot pounds. All right, so now we're going to bleed the brakes. I'm just going to take this rubber cap off. All right, so we're going to gravity bleed the brakes. We're going to do that by pumping the brakes three or four times, and then we're going to open the bleeder screw in back. So do that now. All right, so now with the 10 millimeter wrench, we're going to crack open our bleeder screw. What we're going to look for is just a constant flow of brake fluid with no brakes or no air in it. Once we get that, we'll lock it back tight. All right, looks. Looks like a constant flow with no brakes. Now we'll go ahead and close it back up. Put your cap back on. And what I like to do, hit this area with some brake clean. That'll help you identify once that dries up have any leaks after that, you can see them. So now that you've bled your brakes, you've done both sides, you want to check your fluid reservoir in the front and make sure that your brake fluid is full and topped off and you're all done. All right, so now we can reinstall our wheel. I'm just going to put our lug nuts on and get a couple of threads going by hand. Now with our 21 millimeter socket, we'll just snug these up. You want to do a crisscross pattern.
And now we're going to torque these down to 70 foot pounds. We're going to do that in a crisscross pattern. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.